Welcome to our special Kosher Super Bowl halftime show. We often refer to the serious side of life with sports terminology. For instance, the game of life, games people play, and even war games. Sports can teach us a lot about the serious side of life. You never know how a football will bounce. A good quarterback can throw a ball straight, which will curve away at the last moment. Life also throws us curves and unexpected bounces along the way. So thank you for joining us in sharing some meaningful thoughts, a few jokes to liven us up, ways how to make our Super Bowl party more spiritually satisfying. And even we even have for you a number of Super Bowl trivia questions so you can win a chance for great prizes. Who was the first MVP of the first Super Bowl? Choose your answer. Bart Starr, Johnny Unitas, Joe Namath, or Len Dawson. Here is a list of meaningful ways to make your Super Bowl party a little more Jewish, a little more meaningful. Ask yourself four questions. First, do I know all the appropriate blessings to make on the special foods that we're eating during the Super Bowl party? For example, what blessing would you be making over buffalo sliders with crispy onion rings? What blessing do you make over Guinness marinated bison steak sandwiches? What about those hot and spicy turkey wings? Do you know the blessings? A second question we could ask ourselves, am I ready to deliver one, two or three kosher jokes at my Super Bowl party to make everybody a little bit more levitic, a little more happier? Number three, this is a serious question. Do I have a Torah thought, a word of inspiration to share with my family and friends so the gathering is elevated, has a holiness, a holiness to it? Question number four we can ask ourselves at our Super Bowl party is, have I prepared, can I go and get a copy of a prayer for all of us to say together during the Super Bowl halftime party, make a prayer together to think about the grieving families torn asunder by the terrorists, whether in France, in Israel, or anywhere else in the world. We're having a good time. Let's remember others whose lives have been shattered. Three elderly boobies are having a discussion. One says proudly, my son is a doctor and makes a half a million dollars a year. The second one says even more proudly, my son is a lawyer and he makes a million dollars a year. The third one says simply, my son is a repairman. And how much does he make? She says, two and a half million dollars a year. A fixed man makes so much money? What does he fix? Well, the booby says, sometimes the Super Bowl, sometimes the World Series, and even at times the World Cup game. What Dallas Cowboy had his helmet stolen at the 1994 Super Bowl? Choose your answer. Troy Aikman, Emmett Smith, Michael Irvin or Larry Brown. Wherever you turn, it's impossible to ignore the Super Bowl fever is here. It doesn't matter whether you're a football fan or not. Talk of the Super Bowl seems to follow you wherever you go. It's in the advertisements, it's in the atmosphere, it's the talk of the town. Somehow, everything seems to be connected to the Super Bowl. What captured my attention about the Super Bowl is the way it influences the lives of its viewers. I have naively assumed that because the Super Bowl is a sporting event, it influences should be most experienced in the area of people's health and fitness. Right? You would think it would cause awareness of the importance of leading a healthy lifestyle, cause rise in the membership in sports and fitness clubs, and increase our consumption of healthy foods. Hoi Gewalt isn't so. Somehow, the Super Bowl season is characterized by the opposite trend. The vendors of couches, recliners, and televisions had never been better than now. Everybody's buying these things. And the only increase in food purchase isn't what I would call food from the health food stores, but rather in barbecued ribs, perfect chicken wings, favorite hot dog recipes, not to mention the sales of beers and melty sandwiches and bite size appetizers and other junk food. But at the end of the day, we're just fans, spectators. We watch from the sidelines. The game is played by the professionals. They are the ones who have to work hard, practicing, eating healthy, and staying fit. 
That's why we pay them the big bucks, so that we can sit back and enjoy watching them play. But here I am, dear friends. In our world, Judaism is not football. In Judaism, there are no fans and spectators. In Judaism and Yiddishkeit, everyone needs to play, and no one can take someone else's place. Unlike football, in Judaism, everyone is an integral, an important part of the game. This is a lesson of our commitment to Yiddishkeit and Judaism. Let's not just be a fan, be a player. What was the first Super Bowl in which the winning points came on the final play? Choose your answer. Super Bowl 1, Super Bowl 14, Super Bowl 30, or Super Bowl 36. Become a quarterback, a big word in this game. Are you a parent or an educator? Well, let's all become quarterbacks. What I mean to say is, a quarterback always throws the ball ahead of the receiver. So too, when it comes to Jewish education, always aim ahead of the child's life's experience. Let's not dumb it down. Let's give our children a deeper and richer experience. Aim higher. Really, your child's soul, Neshama, has the wonderful capacity to grasp the profundity of what Jewish heritage is all about. Try it, you won't be disappointed. Become a quarterback. The rabbi and his wife were cleaning up the house. The rabbi comes across a box he didn't recognize. His wife tells him to leave it alone, it's personal. One day when she's out, the curiosity got over him. He opens up the box and inside he finds three eggs and $2,000. When his wife comes home, he admits that he had opened the box and asked her to explain the contents to him. She told him every time he has a bad sermon, she would put an egg in the box. He thought to himself, well, in 20 years, only three bad sermons, that's not so bad. And his wife continued, and every time I got a dozen eggs, I would sell them for $1. What was the first wildcard team to win a Super Bowl? Choose your answer. New York Jets, the Washington Redskins, Chicago Bears, or the Oakland Raiders? The world is a ball. Large, round object. Move it towards the goal. Get it through the doorway. Outmaneuver those big, burly guys trying to stop you, trying to take it from you. Be quick, use your feet. Sounds familiar? Sounds like my life. From everything that one sees or hears, teaches Rabbi Yisrael Baal Shem Tov, one should derive a lesson in the service of the Creator. As in the case of every phenomenon in, the, in God's world, this Super Bowl game can serve as a model and a metaphor in our mission in life. Of course, the objective of the game is to move a ball into a goal or a gate. This would be fairly easy to achieve were it not for the fact that the facing players in the opposite team will do everything in their power to prevent them from scoring a goal. But then again, if there were no opposing team, the full extent of the player's skill and power would never be actualized. For such is the nature of the human being. Our most potent potentials are awakened only by the challenge and adversity coming against us. The ball can be maneuvered with various parts of the player's body. That's how we play it. But the game is primarily with the feet. Right, we use our feet. The game requires much skill, and no less important is the player's speed. Really, much depends on whether a player can outrun his opponent and move more quickly than the other side. What can this teach us in our daily endeavors and in our inner lives? So a key factor in achieving victory in the game is speed. The most skillful player will be quite ineffective if he moves slowly, ploddingly, without enthusiasm. Similarly, a person's life must be animated with alacrity, with joy, with simcha, in order that his deeds should translate into scored goals and really making a true impact on this world. The other important lesson is never to underestimate the power of the feat to advance the ball towards its goal. We must make use of the full array of our faculties, surely our head to our feet, our minds, our capacity for feeling, our talents and our physical energy. But really, the most important faculty in this game is the feet, which represents our capacity for action and of course, complete dedication. Although it constitutes the lowest, the least sophisticated of our faculties, our feet, really it's our commit 
commitment to the divine will to Hashem and our physical action of the mitzvahs that really has the greatest impact on our world and really has the most powerful force for allowing us to advance into our ultimate realization. What player holds the record for the most rushing yards in a single Super Bowl? Choose your answer. Emmett Smith, Franco Harris, Timmy Smith, or Marcus Allen? At our every step, we are challenged by a formidable opposing team, composed in the deeper sense of aspects of our personality we may not be so positive, who obstruct our advance towards the goal and seek to move the ball in the other direction. But it is the perpetual presence of that opposition that provokes our deepest potentials and maximizes our achievements. Because of that pressure, we start to shine. What player holds the record for the most consecutive completions in a Super Bowl? Choose your answer. Joe Montana, Troy Aikman, Phil Simms, or Tom Brady? Another important aspect and lesson that we can learn from the Super Bowl in the, an integral part of the player's training is, of course, focus. Focus, focus, focus. This reminds me of a reflection of the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. When he was a child in the town of Lubavitch, he said the following, I would often sit and stare out of the window. My teacher would give me guidance on how to change my nature. And he would teach me the following, says the Rebbe. Why must you be in the house looking outside? Outside means to the superficial and foolishness of the outside world. Go outside and look in through the window, which means look into the inner, deeper perspectives of life. And so too, our focus must be from the outside in to recognize the depth of the holiness that each of us carry. Steve Goldstein decided to take his Zadie Jaime to the first football game. They had great seats right behind the team's bench. After the game, he asked the Zadie how he liked the experience. Oh, I liked it, Zadie replied, but I just couldn't understand why they were killing each other over 25 cents. Dumbfounded, Steve says. What do you mean? Well, they flipped a coin. One team gets it, and then for the rest of the game, all they are doing is screaming after him, get the quarterback, get the quarterback. It's only 25 cents. What player holds the record for the most career fumbles in a Super Bowl? Choose your answer. Terry Bradshaw, Thurman Thomas, Roger Staubach, or Jim Kelly? Will you be wearing your yarmulke during the game? The two competing teams will be wearing their helmets, new. No. So what's the problem? 